Today on the bench, we have a Rotoswartz CMU200 on our bench in front of us. Uh, this is a universal radio communication tester. It's practically meant for like testing GSM phones and stuff like that. It's a fairly rudimentary piece of equipment. It just contains a spectrum analyzer, an RF signal generator, a few modulation units, a demodulation capability, GSM base station, it can do, this one can also do Bluetooth, and then there's, I think there's also options for doing Wi-Fi if you want to do that, and then there's options for like decoding digital packages, actually decoding analog waveforms and stuff like that, doing harmonics testing and stuff like that. This one does not have the harmonics options on the other hand, so... Uh, then I know that this also contains a power meter, which is not really the best power meter in the world because you don't really measure directly on these terminals. You're actually measuring somewhere inside of this, so you have a bit of like uncertainty because of coaxes going into the unit. So it's not the best power meter in the world, but it's probably is more accurate than like 1 dB. I don't really know. I haven't read a spec sheet of this so far. Or I have, but it's really hard to understand a spec sheet from on first glance at times. But this is having two bi-directional ports, so this one here is typically rated for about 50 watts, which is quite a lot of power. <laughs> good if you're testing like amplifiers, then you can just feed it straight into this unit. This one is good for like 2 watts. Both of these can both send out signals and they can take in signals, which is good. Uh, then you have I think that is just an output, uh, according to this label here, so this is an output. Uh, good if you're having like RF signal generators or like one output waveforms, like modulation and stuff, then you'll have yet another input because these two weren't enough apparently, four terminals is the way to go apparently. And then you have some auxiliary ports here, this is mostly for audio measurements, uh, this unit does not have the option for that, so none of these are really even connected as far as I know. I don't really know if they're connected or not, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if these aren't even connected. These four are on the other hand, I have no power to the unit at the moment because I was thinking of tearing it down a little. Take a look under the hood and stuff, maybe get this label off because I don't have 26 other ones of these, I just have this one. This knob here is quite nice, it spins very nicely, but on the other hand that click sound is not too nice to listen to. So I should probably fix that. But otherwise this unit is in a rather good cosmetic condition on the front. I guess it has a speaker underneath here, just so you can listen to like demodulation and stuff. Don't really know why you would need to listen to demodulation and stuff on an industrial piece of test equipment that's mostly meant to sit in a rack and do automated testing, and this seems a bit overkill. I think they could have saved a few bucks there, but it's also meant to just sit on a bench for like general lap use, so well, maybe the speaker actually has some purpose. But yeah, I'll take you around the back and go through that because this is having yet more options on the back if you, if you thought this was enough ports and yes you can do digital stuff here and yeah because it does everything, and then you can also take like a PCIM A cards, two of them apparently. Uh, good if you're trying to update the software on this, but which I might actually do because this is having a really old uh, mini ID hard drive, and I don't know how long that's gonna survive. Uh, but I know that the mini ID hard drive inside of this thing is dead. So that scope there, which generally would have actually cost it like. Two to three thousand dollars retail or second hand value of like two to three grand on this is yeah I picked that up for like could have been two hundred bucks. Yeah, each ADC inside of this unit is worth more than I paid for the whole unit. Because the hard drive is dead. The rest of the the whole unit just sits there perfect, uh, except missing a knob here, but otherwise it's perfect. Dead hard drive. Uh, eBay score number one. I'm thinking of getting a new hard drive for this, yeah, probably a, like an SSD or something, and then just plugging that in with it, like an SS SATA to mini ID converter, and then just have that running. It should be simple enough. 
uh, because then I could get this up and running. I just need a, like a ghost version of the software for this because HP doesn't have it. I haven't really found a Windows 98 copy laying around and I could technically download it from Microsoft's website or something like that but then I need all the software needed for this scope and it's just a hassle. It's probably easier just to ask someone in the electronics community if they just have a hard, have this unit and can go to the hard drive for me because that would be a very kind gesture. But yeah, back to this unit. I'll turn it around and bring you back in a second. So now a few seconds later, because this thing is just really heavy, but it, I think it weighs 18 kilograms or something like that. Not too fun moving with just one hand because the other needs to hold the camera. So here on the back we have yet more of these DIN connectors because there wasn't enough of them on the front. Here you can have yet one more PCI PC, uh, yet another memory card, uh, I think, if I remember correctly. And then we have a network cable or a network port here. This is an Ethernet port, but it's not for the actual unit. Yeah, this is meant for a GSM base station, if I remember correctly, or was that this Ethernet port? Yeah, one of them is for a GSM base station, and one of them is for another option. I'm not really that interested in running this as a GSM base station or the other Ethernet requiring functionality that this could do because I'm not really interested in GSM and Bluetooth and stuff like that. It's not really what I do. So, <laughs> this sadly isn't Ethernet so that I can hook it up to a computer and just control this over the internet because that would have been really really nice. But no, we have another option down here for remote control. Yes, an old GPIB port and then we have some other port over here. I don't really know what that's for. And I think, what is this? It's two COM ports, we have a VGA monitor output. These two, as far as I know, they're only for USB keyboards. I don't know why they have two, but yeah, I, I'm wondering if it will accept a USB thumb drive or something like that. I have my doubts that it won't, because reasons... Uh, as far as I've read in the manual, this is only for keyboards, which is a bit weird. Why couldn't they just put a PS2 connector or something like that here instead? If it was only for that. It's just like this Ethernet port, why couldn't I control the unit over it? It would have been a very, very nice feature. But nope, apparently not. And then we have a reference import, in case you have a 10 megahatch reference lab standard. Uh, now this option, I don't have anything in the lab that's more stable and more likely calibrated than this is because internally inside of this we have an ovenized oscillator we actually have the highest stability option that this unit can come with which is one of the reasons why this is quite kind of a nice unit uh, so yeah so that's nice that it has a reference import it also has two reference outputs isn't that kind of bragging that you just have a good oscillator within the unit when you put two outputs for it or it could just be, because in the manual it says that if you feed a signal into this, then in the settings you can actually set it to output on these two. So you have like a reference splitter inside of the unit already. Which is really good if you have other units as well that also needs your 10 megahertz reference. Then you don't need to drag over a coax for each and every unit. You can just drag over one coax to here and then two short coaxes from here over to the other units. Because I think this also has an amplifier inside of it. To, to facilitate that function, which is nice. And then we have, I think this is like an IF RX, uh, so this, uh, is this the third IF converter? It's, I think it has something to do with the spectrum analyzer option. Uh, this doesn't come as a standard on these units, by the way. This is an optional extra, like everything else is on this unit as well. Uh, if you want anything inside of this unit, it's optional extra practically, except the base things, which is like a spectrum analyzer, an RF generator, and a power meter, and then some other basic stuff, uh, and a lot of software. So yeah, that's what you get with the unit. Then, if you want additional stuff, like this also has an additional second RF generator inside of it, and that's optional extra, a higher stability references, is also optional extra 
as well as like a thousand other things. Like there's more hardware options for this unit than I care to poke a stick at. Uh, because I think I have, I think it's like, could it be? 20 or 30 different hardware options for this unit. And then in terms of software, there's probably over a hundred options. I think I have an option up to all, all the option all options all the way up to like 98 inside of this unit. Yeah, I know it's like maybe like 20 or 30 options, software options just for this. That's actually for this unit. And there's like a whole slew of other options. I'll probably link in some list in the video. Just scrolling through the options. So yeah. But I'm thinking of taking this apart. It shouldn't be all too hard because uh, because it's these two legs. It has seen some damage, so this thing has probably been set down onto a floor a bit too harshly, or probably dropped a little, because this leg here is apparently a bit broken. I did try to repair it a little with a heat gun, but I think I got my temperature set a bit too high because it kind of burned. So, yeah. But I repaired a crack inside of it, so it should hold up now. It's not really straight, so I should probably fix that too, but yeah, a bit lower setting on the heat gun next time, and it should probably look a bit better. Okay, maybe we should actually place things on the table. So, yeah. And this is just using a T15 and it's kind of the only thing you need to need to consider. Uh, there is a handle on this side, you don't need to take that off to actually get the casing off, it's really nice in that regard. So, unlike the HP up here, when they're, where the handle is actually part of the inner case, so there you do need to take off the handle, because it actually holds on the outer case. Here you don't. And on this HP, uh, this outside doesn't even need to be removed because it just has a lid. So yeah, two, three different, three completely different ways of taking apart different instruments. And now it's all about taking this thing apart. So I'll bring you back later when this thing gets back into focus. So yeah, when I have torn this apart a bit more. Uh, but generally, it's just lifting this up a bit, do note that this thing here can actually push in if you can see it, so it, it just pushes in it's really heavy on the other end but yeah, you push this thing in or by lifting the whole thing up and then you just lift it by the handles and this thing just slides off really easy putting it back together it's a bit more fiddly because there are cables and stuff inside so the usual stuff. It's kind of the same story with this one. This has a flat flex cable that holds all of these probe sensitive or probe ID stuff and probe power and such. It's on a ribbon cable that can get damaged if you just slam on the case. So yeah, but be back soon. So back and so here's the lid that holds all the hardware options. Uh, now you might think, okay, there's not so many hardware options inside of here, because well, I can only count like one, two, three, four things here. And then there's a card here, and as you can see, there's an optional card here. And then there's, of course, a lot more optional card here, it's four additional ones. But this is just what's installed, and you can actually pick and choose between different things, and I don't think you actually can get a unit that actually contains everything, because I don't think there's room enough in this unit for it. In other case, it might be longer. Who knows? I don't think they offer a unit that actually could, can do everything. Even though that would be a very nice unit. But yeah. And then here on the side, I'm not really going to show you it. In actually in focus and everything, because here on the side is all the actual software key or uh, license codes and stuff. And I don't really want to send mine all the way out into the internet, but here they are. It's 27 of them for this unit and it's like they place them all here on the side try to avoid the screws which they've done a good job at and then there's a few extra down here and yeah, it's really silly there's a lot of them so and then they have a wiring diagram on top of this all so 
in case you ever forget. So here's the secondary card that I don't have. And as you can see, we have four ports here that goes away to these four ports. So they actually poke their way here. And I do, don't really like how Roden Swords has done it here. Because they have this coax here that is just bent. And then going here, because it's a bit longer than the other ones. It's actually the longest poking one out here, I think it is. So, yeah. It's, yeah, it's this one. And, but it could have just poked, poked out, like, the extra inch or so that this is gonna give, or maybe two inches, like. Is that a big problem? And then secondly, this bracket here is actually sharp. What are you doing, Rodan Swords? I thought you were professionals. Why isn't this the bird? Like, I can actually cut my finger on this if I t t put my finger in and drag it to the side, but I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna hurt. I like heat shrink sleeving on this to keep them together, but this long, longest one, don't just strip tie it together like this. It's really unprofessional. Let it just stick out. It's, it's better. Yes, it might short something out down here and stuff like that, and that's why you have heat shrinking on it. But heat shrinking is cheap, so you could just have a longer piece. Why do this? This is... This here is unprofessional, because... Coax cables don't really like getting bent like that. They have a minimum bend radius. This radius here is kind of okay. This one here looks a bit tight, especially when it's pushed together like that. And but this actual sleeving is going up against this sharpness here is used unprofessional. So yeah, don't know what you're doing there. Otherwise, this unit is really, really nice. And there's more coaxes here than I care to poke a stick at. Uh, there's a lot of them. To get this lid off, it's just two screws here on the side. So let's grab a screwdriver. You actually take this apart there is one screw here and yeah this is just a Phillips number one nothing special and my Phillips number one <laughs> screwdriver kind of have lost everything because they normally marked this one is so well used that it's I don't even know what it is anymore okay it's a Phillips number one so This is not easy to do with your one hand, especially one's wrong hand. Because I'm right-handed, not left-handed. But I guess that went in under. Thanks. Ah, there it is. Yep, two real tiny short screws, and then this should probably just lift up. This here is actually nice engineering. It's just folded over a bit hooks onto the side and falls down really nice and that's a lot more RF stuff than I anticipated so let's place this to the side so what do we have here we have like I wonder why these are having all this weird coloring especially this one like what has happened to it I have no clue it looks like it's been through a fire or something but this does looks just perfect so could it be chemical damage? Has this unit been in a corrosive environment or something? I'm not gonna take these cards out and actually pull them apart because I rather want to actually see this unit working. Uh, and here's apparently the network cable going into. So this must be the... This is the B21 option. So... Yeah, whatever B21 is, it needs a network cable. And what more options do we have in here? Okay, here's a lot of cables. This is a uh, B68. So yeah. And over here, we have an RXTX board. Doesn't seem to be optional. It just seems to be a board. It seems to be two options here that we can link away to stuff. Does any one of these have? Yeah, this has like a fair few ports. 
that are nice. This has an extra port. Wonder what that is for. This is all occupied. Is there any more non unused parts? No, not to what I can see. So, okay, these two have something to do with each other. This is sneaking away. This is our main. I think this is the actual full spectrum analyzer or something, or this is the spectrum analyzer. So, yeah, one of these is a spectrum analyzer. I know that I have. What were options for the 6821? B21, I think, is the optional. Uh, but why would that then need. Or was it the 68 that is the optional uh, signal generator? But yeah, one of them is an optional signal generator. Or this card might be the optional signal generator because this is. I uh, have no clue. It's not really written on it. So yeah, this is yet another weird item. It's unmarked. So yeah. So from this side, it all looks kind of good. And here's our mini ID hard drive. I have no clue how big that thing is. Could I get it out without a lot of fuss? No, it's actually screwed onto the front panel. Maybe this camera can find it. If we set to manual focus. That maybe we can actually read how big it is or something. Who knows? But it's probably something. So yeah, we have the hard drive, which I'm thinking of maybe changing, depending on how old it is. I probably want to ghost this thing. Depending on how easy it is to get the software for this, because if it's just download a file, put it on a PCIM CA card or whatever they call it, and just swap into the front and power it up, put it into like some installation thingy and then just put the software onto it, then like if it's easy then I don't wouldn't really care. If it's really really hard, then if Rodan Swords has made it a pain in the ass, then then yeah. Ghosting it would probably be a good idea. So yeah, this is the, this side of the unit. Let's... I'll actually... No, I don't close this up yet. We'll take you over to the other side. If I can find a way to hold this without cutting myself, because... Yet again, the outside of this is not deepered. Why? What's it so hard to just take this plate and put it through like a tumble, like uh, through, through a tumbler where you partly have a tumbler with small stones that are going to keep over the edges. Like it's not horribly on the bird, but it's not nicely. It's not nicely done. For professional instrument using non-rigid coax, then I would have actually expected this to be more deepered than what it actually is. Or you could just sandblast all of these, it's, it also works for deburring. And on this opposite side, we have a few more things. Over here we have the rigid coaxes for the board that sits over here, which is our spectrum analyzer, power meter. Well, probably our spectrum analysis, probably our parameter, I don't know. So yeah, don't quote me, but most likely it's because a spectrum analyzer isn't a small thing to just build. So it likely isn't just this tiny option over here that is the spectrum analyzer. This car probably has something to do with it. Probably both cards together is what actually does this, all of the magic. So here we have yet another input can, because it goes to all of these. Uh, and as we can probably expect, this might actually, because this is sitting on the total opposite side of this one, then they might actually have board-to-board -board connectors between them. Uh, wouldn't surprise me. So yeah, this might actually, so this is yet another can. And then over here, we have the high stability option. So this is now the best oscillator I have within my lab, because 
It's kind of the only high stability oscillator I have in my lab that's probably calorie or at least somewhat in tune. Because I do have this one from Crimble Navigation. Uh, so this is also a high stability OCXO. Uh, I don't really know how high stability this is. I know that it's at the temperature of an iced oscillator and I know that it should be fairly good. Uh, compared to this one, I don't know which one of these is actually having lowest drift and stuff when up to temperature and actually calibrated and stuff. Wouldn't be surprised if that one there is superior to this one because that one there should be like yeah I'll probably insert the spec sheet for it but yeah it should be quite decent in this one here I have no clue <laughs> maybe someone who's more good at the numbers for these ones could figure it out but yeah this blotch here is kind of destroying all the for useful information about it but yeah that's another project. I'm thinking of actually getting this to a perf board, putting it on a perf board and getting it to actually run just as a lab reference. And then I got this one, so now that project is kind of useless. Because this, this unit here should serve just adequately fine as a reference for my whole lab, for all measurements. Because this here should be superior to everything else I'm doing. So yeah, this is a hardware look through of the Rodensworth CMU200 or a brief look into it because I'm not gonna take these cards apart because yeah I'm not fully confident in myself that I can actually put it together or it shouldn't be too hard to put it together if you document how you take it apart you should be capable of putting it back together it's not that I don't want to do it like I would gladly actually take this apart but I rather also keep this unit intact and actually working and preferably I, I do know that taking these types of stuff apart and putting it back together without really applying the right torque to all screws and even reseating the, these RF connectors can actually affect the calibration of the unit and I don't know how recently this thing was calibrated I don't know how accurate to its calibration it is but by doing nothing to it so by not taking it apart and just using it then it should be as close to calibrated as I can get it without calibrating it well that's the idea at least so that's my reason for not taking it apart so if I had two of these then yeah the worst of the two I would happily take apart but since I don't have two of these and I have no way of ensuring that this is calibrated because this is miles ahead in calibration than anything else in my lab so I want to rather keep this as my like calibration reference for now and actually have something to reference frequencies and stuff like that too so yeah I'm not gonna take this apart any further than this because that might just end up destroying it even though it would be fun to know exactly what all of the stuff inside of here actually does and how it's put together and how it works and stuff like that so yeah I'll also make a video on the software side of this and like using it for the first time and seeing all the quirks of it uh, I may maybe should mention the performance of this for all the curious people so this is going up to I think it's 2.7 gigahatch from like 50 kilowatch and yeah, 50 kilowatts in terms of spectrum analyzers is fairly high frequency. Most spectrum analyzers, like you can buy a cheap Rigel one for like a bit over a thousand dollars. And that one thing, I think, goes down to 9 kilowatts. But at the same time, if I'm going to measure low frequencies, then I kind of have this one. So, and that one is fully adequate for low frequency measurements. Yes, I don't have the same dynamic range and the FFT on this is practically a toy so yeah it's not as good yes I can I can I can give you that a proper DSA or something like that a dynamic dynamic single analyzer that goes down into millihertz and stuff would actually be superior to this but I don't have that so yeah and where I'm supposed to have this in my lab it's gonna live on top of this so this is my digital signal generator. I should probably do a teardown of this sometime in the future too because this one is actually interesting. It's from 1996. It has more 
weird stuff inside of it than I care to focus the cat. I think it has five CPUs inside of it. Yes, five CPUs I think it has because I did look up the numbers on the chips and stuff and I think it was five CPUs. I need to go back and actually look at that again. Actually make sure that it was actually five and not one of them was happening to be like some ROM or something. It can be kind of hard to tell at times. But yeah, I think it has five CPUs. I know that it at least has two. So yeah. And then here's my collection of resistors. So all of this is just going to move up the floor. But yeah, I should probably also turn down one of these probes because, especially this one, I've taken a look inside of it before, never on video though. And it's actually like a ceramic hybrid inside of it. And it's actually quite interesting. But yeah, that's for the future. So yeah. So I'll just put this back together and then make a video about actually using this from a software perspective. Probably play around with it, maybe make a first reactions video, then play around with it a bit and then probably make like a more throughout video of actually how to use it for those people who are more interested in how actually to use one of these to actually get measurements set up and stuff like that. But I also make a first impressions video just like, is the software actually logical and usable? I have heard that Rodensworks actually has a whole dedicated department towards actually making user interfaces and trying to make it logical and easy to use and user friendly and stuff like that. So, I do have high hopes that this is just going to be a thing that you just press the on button on and then you can get up and running without ever touching the manual. So, yeah. I have, though, touched the manual, so... Yeah. But we'll see how logical it is to use, and how easy it is to use it. For now, I'll just put this back together. When you're putting this back together, consider this little wire. If you have the audio and audio option for this, that enables these four ports, uh, then this wire shouldn't be really be anything to worry about, and then the whole unit should be really nice to just put together and stuff. So yeah. But that's it for now. And hope you all have a nice day, and I have suddenly created a really long video for the channel. Who knew? And probably a few more to come, because this is going to be a fun beast to play with. So yeah. And then I should probably get that up and running someday. I did actually suspect of getting to 1.5 giga hatch before I got a Spectrum Analyzer, but... That seems to be different. Now I have a Spectrum Analyzer and I still don't have a 1.5 gig scope. But yeah. So, have a good day.